<coughs> well, thank you very much. Uh, well, first of, first of all, I have to apologize for my English. As time goes by, so goes my English. And I'm, I'm, I'm told to address three questions. One is the current situation facing the crisis, the main winners and losers countries in Europe. And the second is the trends on uh, regulation, financial regulation in Europe and Spain. And the third, how the crisis will affect Spain and how Spain get out of the crisis. So <clears throat> let's go for the first question, winners and losers. Well, actually, I think that there will be no, no winner countries. Everybody is going to lose in this crisis, but there will be countries that will lose less than others. Uh, in a general way, in Europe, it's quite clear that uh, Nordic, Nordic countries will do better than Southern. This is probably because of a more flexible uh, labor market, which is combined with uh, a, a more protection, it's a, so the, the Nordic model, we, we call it in Europe. Um, and when you look at those countries, what is quite striking is that uh, if you look at the external equilibrium, and so uh, the, the, the current account balance in this year, according to the OECD calculations, uh, all of them will be in surplus. Um, Denmark, Finland, Sweden, and we, if we add also Germany and uh, Switzerland, and that will be between 0 and 10% GNP, which is uh, quite, quite a lot. Um, this is so because uh, they have been able uh, to go upwards in the value-added uh, chain. And uh, so they have uh, adapted quite well to, um, to globalization. Um, the, the, the reason for that, the main reason in my view, is uh, that therefore they have done for uh, decades in, in education. They have a much better educational system than southern, uh, southern countries. Financial crisis also probably will hit, less, uh, will hit them a little less, but this is because uh, not so far they have a big one uh, in Sweden, and I think they, they learned the lessons, and uh, they run, and the Swedes run very well uh, this, uh, this crisis. That, uh, <coughs> it's interesting to say that uh, ex ante, uh, that cost, uh, they put something like 4% of GNP uh, of uh, public money in order to to, to, to f face the crisis, but uh, after the time passed, uh, actually the cost of the crisis had been zero because they recovered all the money they, they put. Well, the southern countries, for, on the contrary, they are quite uh, rigid uh, labor markets. Uh, they are all in deficit. If uh, you take uh, France, Italy, and Spain, uh, that will be the deficit on current account will be between two, uh, two and 10% of GNP. If uh, we add Greece and Portugal, well, they will go up to 15% of GNP, uh, current account deficit. Well, that means that uh, uh, in the southern countries we have a lot of difficulties to be competitive. And uh, we have uh, a, a big problem with education, uh, of course, but not only with education, with professional training, research, uh, this uh, certainly those countries and Spain is among them they don't put enough uh, effort or enough money in those uh, in those activities probably also uh, um, there is a question of individual responsibility and normally in northern countries uh, they put much emphasis in individual responsibility whereas in southern countries we often we go or try to explain our problems uh, through a collective uh, a responsibility, which is uh, a way to delay uh, our individual responsibility. Well, on the second, on the second, uh, the second questions, the trends on the role of uh, financial regulation in Europe and Spain. Well, what is quite clear is that we are going for more regulation. That, uh, in my view, is uh, is very clear. Then, well, the question is, uh, well, how, how we can go in this direction if the markets regulate themselves, which is true, but um, the problem is uh, what is the cost and uh, what the delays. 
uh, we can live in a crisis uh, without uh, public intervention, probably the crisis will be longer and will be deeper. But, uh, well, of course, this is uh, subject to much arguing. But in any case, we are going for more regulation. I have to, um, to remember that um, something that in Europe will, uh, will seem quite extraordinary, the fact that in the U.S. investment bank were unregulated, uh, actually, because, well, the SEC uh, was responsible for that, not the Federal Reserve, and in practice they were more or less unregulated. Uh, what is interesting, in my view, is that uh, the remaining are, have asked all of them to be regulated like banks. Well, we have accounting problems, and, uh, and also probably there will be more regulation on that. Uh, the first is uh, re regarding to rating agencies. Uh, in my view, it's quite clear that they fail uh, to properly rate the, 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 the risk. But the problem is uh, what to do. Uh, one line of, uh, of thought is uh, just to try to increase the number of uh, rating agencies. Well, this is not so easy, of course. And the second is to try to set up a kind of supervisory body, but uh, that will be, in my view, uh, very difficult. So the question of the rating agencies will remain open for some time. Then is the question of the accounting rules. Uh, there had been a convergence between the United States and the European Union in the last year, but uh, the method we have used in Europe, in my view, was the wrong one. Uh, the Commission, uh, the European Commission, asked the ISB uh, to produce a set of rules, of accounting rules, and uh, they go to sleep. And uh, sometime, uh, well, the, the discussion went on. Um, we, well, the banks discuss very much more than, than, than firms, but uh, uh, we discuss a certain number of uh, provisions. But uh, when the, com the European Commission took the question back, it was too, uh, too late because the discussion was much advanced and uh, they will not appear as uh, um, going backwards. So um, we were on the verge of, of, of uh, um, having uh, regulations that from the point of view of a bank will completely nonsensical as uh, those that they try to do, just to apply the fair value uh, not only to the, to the trading book, but also to the banking book which could mean that uh, um, any time the, the European Southern Bank uh, change uh, the interest rates, uh, the, the, the balance sheet of, of banks will, be, uh, will explode or will implode uh, according to, to, uh, to uh, this, uh, this norm if we apply the fair value norm strictly to the banking book. Uh, it was, uh, it was very difficult just to, to convince uh, the people of ESB to take, uh, to take this out. Uh, in my view, this is because uh, there is uh, some fundamentalism in, in, in this issue. But, um, but uh, the problem is uh, that, in my view, it is impossible to set accounting regulations uh, out of uh, any consideration in big uh, areas. Uh, countries or uh, big economic zones have, uh, have their history and um, the practice, and you have to take into account. That means that it will be very difficult to, to make this to converge. Um, but because in the end, when you, when you apply uh, the, the, the fair value, if uh, we should have uh, we applied fair value in a strict way to the, um, to the, banking, uh, to, to the banking sector all along this crisis, all banks will be bankrupt because uh, for the great number of structured products, there was no market at all. If there is no market at all, normally value should be zero. Since you can put this value at zero, so you have to go to, to the auditors. And so at the end, the fair value was defined by the discussion between banks and auditors. I think this, well, then everything is relative and I think we should uh, also relativize, relativize a little uh, uh, this fair value norm. But, but the more fundamental uh, problem is that uh, uh, we have uh, to make those regulations, accounting rules, in, in between Europe and the U.S., and uh, this will be quite, uh, quite difficult. 
Another issue is uh, the, the transparency. It's quite clear that we need more transparency, but uh, there are already, um, already some uh, um, uh, steps. Uh, for instance, for CDS, uh, don't, that, that's going in the right, indirect uh, direction. And then comes the question of uh, the supervision that uh, certainly um, will be tighter in the, in the future. But uh, um, if we take uh, uh, two examples, uh, Spain or, or the UK or, or any, any other relative, any other number, any other country, because uh, um, the difference is that in Spain we have uh, traditionally we have had a tighter re regulation. Um, but uh, these, uh, these have, uh, uh, of course, sheltered us from the crisis. That's uh, completely true. Uh, but uh, there are questions who, uh, that arise. The one is who pays the supervision. In Spain, uh, normally, it's, uh, well, it's, it's free for banks, but there are a lot of countries in which uh, there are the banks who pay for supervision. This is uh, arguable that the banks uh, should have to pay for that. And then there is the question of the moral hazard. The tighter the supervision, uh, the, supervision the higher the moral hazard. Uh, we have uh, in Spain a big discussion about uh, the deposit insurance and uh, the discussion between the banks and the, and, and, the, and the Bank of Spain was the following. If uh, you, Bank of Spain, are, uh, exerce a tight regulation on, on, on the banks, then if a bank goes bankrupt, you have a share of the responsibility. That means that you have also to contribute to the deposit insurance scheme. Um, well, since the Bank of Spain have the power, they say, well, that's true, but we will not put any, any money on that. So it's completely private. But it is true that uh, the more you go uh, into the tighter supervision, the, the, the more you create also a moral hazard. So, Perhaps can do uh, two quick uh, general considerations uh, on, on, on how we could or how uh, what will happen. Um, in my view, if this, if the, the problem of regulation and, and supervision is taken through the optic of risk, uh, what is quite clear is that uh, it would be wise not to, uh, to shift all the risk out of the first uh, institution that took the risk. Um, in my view, that will be always, uh, or regulation will go, and I think that will go in, the, in this direction, the regulation will always oblige the, 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 the banks or the institutions that take the, 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 the first, in the first instance the risk, just to keep a little, some, some part, some fraction of the risk, even if it is a small one. Because uh, that will, uh, um, will oblige uh, institutions just to uh, look at the risk in uh, probably uh, in a more detailed uh, way. Of course, uh, this is, uh, that goes against innovation and separation between origination and administration of credits. But uh, uh, in my view, this is, this is uh, uh, quite, uh, uh, this have a lot of sense. And uh, that will probably help uh, in the big issue, in this case is, uh, have, have remained, of uh, all operations that are taken out of the balance sheet. Uh, in, in Spain, uh, the, what has happened is that the Bank of Spain, say the, uh, the, the, the banks, that uh, if they put operations out of the balance sheet, that will be uh, completely um, uh, indifferent. Uh, they will continue to consume capital uh, those operations. So um, they, had, they had no interest in, 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 in building conduits and all these uh, all, 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 all those, uh, vehicles that had been um, set up in other countries. So uh, when the crisis hit, uh, uh, the, the, the Spanish bank were quite sheltered from this uh, regulation of Banco Spain. And I think that uh, probably uh, things will go in this way. Just keep always a small a fraction, even if it is uh, very small, of risk in, in, the, in, your, in your books. Of course, uh, there had been, uh, and an, an there is, a better understanding of, of risk and probably better regulation as the case of uh, uh, Basel II. 
Uh, but uh, again, this again raises a question. If you, um, uh, if you make banks, um, if you, uh, if the consumption of capital, so you, you, can, uh, you can be safer if you um, uh, oblige banks to put aside more capital. Uh, in the discussions of, uh, of this issue with, uh, with the, 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 the Basel Committee, uh, we ask our banks right from the beginning if uh, we have models that understand better uh, the risk if we could reduce the 8% consumption. And the answer was, in any case, uh, that will no, uh, go down from 8%. Uh, so they invented uh, other, other ways of, uh, to, to put capital. But the problem is that if you want to be very safe and just to, uh, just to, to make a great consumption of capital, uh, then uh, banks normally will try to turn the, the regulation and then uh, they, will, they will again, a risk will originate. And uh, it is quite difficult to find the balance. And then finally, there is, uh, there is the question of the cyclicity uh, problem. Uh, what uh, now provisions uh, work in a pro-cyclical way and uh, you, when you need more is when you have less provisions and um, well again in Spain we have a quite interesting experience since the Bank of Spain roughly 10 years ago uh, decided to set up an, an anti-cyclical provision and um, well this is, was calculated as uh, uh, taking uh, in, into, into account uh, expected losses during a cycle of uh, 10 years or so uh, on top of your uh, pro normal provision, specific pro provisions, a generic one that you have also, you have to, uh, to put provisions according to this average of 10 years uh, expected losses. And um, we discussed uh, the, this issue twice with Bank of Spain, one when this was said. In general, the Spanish uh, banks uh, agree, uh, but, uh, well, saying that uh, that uh, uh, impaired the, 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 the competitivity of Spanish banks. But uh, the, the main question was that it was uh, too heavy-handed, uh, as, as they put, since we have to, to, um, to make a kind of a fund that will be uh, completely covered when it reaches three times uh, the normal specific provisions. Uh, well, after discussion, that was uh, a little change. And... Uh, Later on, uh, when the new accounting rules uh, were put into practice, again, we have to discuss the, the issue again, because auditors uh, refused to put uh, clean uh, uh, audits um, uh, because of the fair, uh, fair value accounting. If you take this, uh, this provision, in, in any moment, you will not have a, a photograph, an exact photograph of the situation of the bank, uh, even if it is better. But uh, in any way, there will be a qualification, and we didn't want to have a qualification. There was a long discussion, and uh, finally, there was an agreement, so auditors uh, accepted that, even if uh, the, that distorted the real and the uh, image of uh, the bank at that moment. But I think that um, if, 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 I, if, I, if I put uh, forward this question, it's because I think that the regulation will uh, uh, take into account the psychical problem, which is a very important one. And probably the Spanish experience is the one, the only country that have conducted this experience during uh, a fair number of years, uh, will be relevant and probably things go uh, go in this in this direction. And, uh, so the, the big two uh, points will be one to keep a fraction of the risk uh, in, in the always in the balance sheet of the bank that have originated the, the credit or the, the, or the operation, and the second one the anti-cyclical problem that I think that have to be addressed and will probably be addressed. Now the third question is uh, what will happen in Spain, but I think Salvador will talk of that. So very quickly. Um, Spain has been very much affected by the crisis, but actually we are, we are, we are through three crises different. Uh, one is uh, the oil and, uh, and commodities uh, crisis. We are more dependent on oil than the average countries, and the increase of uh, the price of oil in, uh, in this year and that will have an impact of our economy of around 2% of GDP, which is quite a lot. Uh, 
Uh, of course, next year, uh, that will, we will recover that, so it will be, uh, it would, uh, uh, would be a good thing. Then the financial crisis. Uh, well, we have uh, uh, practically all mortgages in Spain are indexed. That means that uh, for 100 basic points of increase of, uh, of interest rates, there will be 0.5 GNP uh, impact in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the GNP. Of course, a reduction will have an expansionary, uh, expansionary um, uh, incidence. So also we, we, uh, we experience that uh, this year, but next year uh, things will be better. Our banks are more solid than average uh, because of um, those uh, the, the, the Bank of Spain regulation. So we have less first impact uh, in the, the, the financial crisis, but we, are, but we have more second round effects since we have a heavy in the heavily indebted country. Uh, not the public sector, the public sector is not very much indebted, but it's the private sector which is indebted so that uh, uh, our international reserve position is more than 70% of GNP debtor again, uh, towards the rest of the world, uh, which is uh, quite a lot. So um, we are very much vulnerable to a change in, uh, in interest rates, but uh, that will be uh, perhaps not the more relevant thing. We are um, very much sensible to increase in spreads and that, that will certainly uh, hit us. The third, uh, the third crisis is the residential construction crisis. Um, it, residential construction is uh, this, this year, or at the beginning of the year, since this is reducing quite quickly, was 9% of GDP, which is roughly twice as much as in any other European country. And it's quietly, uh, now it's quite reducing uh, to um, uh, 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 to, to uh, numbers we will be more or less in line with, uh, with the rest of European countries. That means that uh, the incidence in this year, well, in nine, next in this year perhaps uh, has been 1% of GNP since uh, there was a lot of uh, uh, residential uh, apartments that were uh, speedy to finalizing them. But the next year uh, we have probably an incidence of three GNP points, uh, which is quite a lot, and does have a very important incidence in employment. The employment in the sector will be cut probably in, in half, and that means uh, a, a lot of people on unemployment, uh, no, perhaps 800, 900,000 uh, people. Uh, in, in this sector, uh, the, 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 the unemployment in, from January to November has gone from 240,000 to more than half a million. So, uh, well, employment is a hard, hard hit, uh, and uh, well, this uh, compounded problem we have with immigration, and that will be not easy to, 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 to solve. The government, our government, has been quite slow to react to this uh, situation. Uh, they, they thought that the crisis was less serious than, than it is. And uh, well, now they are putting up uh, measures in order to fight uh, the, the crisis. The, the government uh, and the public sector is well positioned since it was in surplus uh, in, in, 19, in 2007. Well, now it's going to, uh, into deficit. And the only question is when we will hit the, three, the saline of 3%, which is set by uh, Brussels. But also, uh, we will certainly uh, go far than that. But uh, Brussels authorized that when there is uh, a special circumstance, as it is the case now. Uh, we have uh, to perform structural reforms. That's always very difficult. But uh, after all, more flexibility in the, in the labor market. There are already some flexibility, but also uh, we have a social dialogue that has kept in Spain a social peace, which is a, 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 a very important thing. There are rigidities in the retail sector, in professional organization, of course. But our main problem and the main reform should be one of education, and from a school to professional training to universities and to research. And that, uh, <coughs> that, all, that, that is quite uh, difficult for, 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 any, for any government. Uh, it is very difficult to, uh, to, to face universities 
it's difficult to face uh, primary and secondary education since now uh, the, the women have joined the, 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 the labor market. Uh, it is very difficult to resist uh, 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 a strike of uh, 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 school teachers. So uh, the government hesitate uh, a lot. But uh, uh, sometimes we have to face uh, the, the problem. And in my view, uh, now it's a good time to, to, to start. Uh, because of the, of the crisis, people are worried of problems, so uh, in, in my view, that will be a very good time to start. Well, as a conclusion, uh, for the first question, there is no winner uh, on this crisis, but the northern countries will fare better than southern. Uh, we go for more regulation and supervision, and uh, in, this, uh, in this line, probably, uh, the, the, the risk, uh, the, the, the fact that to keep one share of the risk uh, in the books uh, will probably uh, go in this in this direction, uh, and, the, and, and, and the psychical problem. And for the uh, for Spain, Spain will be hard hit, but it is true also that we have a group quick, uh, more quicker than any other countries in the past. So after some time of a pause and even fall. I hope we will be able to recover growth. Right, thank you very much.